Welcome Pairs and Spares Bible Study. My name is Charlie Shuler, and I will be leading this study. But we have some announcements. Wanted to make sure that you know that the church is open for in-person worship this Sunday. They've shortened the service to 30 minutes and have added a fourth service plus streaming. So now you can participate, you can be there at 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, and 11 o'clock. But remember your social distancing, no huggings, and to wear your mask and cover your mouth, nose and your mouth. And to all those dads out there, I wish you a fantastic Father's Day. Mine is kind of special because my son is with us today and his family, which makes it even better. We have another cause for celebration this week. Jane Williford has a birthday this week. But let's get down to business here. Our lesson today is found on page 27, page 27 of our student manual. And it's called Lost and Found. And the purpose of the lesson is to renew our commitment to the demands of faith. And that's interesting. Have you ever thought about faith having demands? Well, we're gonna learn more about that in this lesson. But first, would you join me in our opening prayer? Father God, let the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart, and our actions be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord. Amen. So I have some background for you from the Leader's God. They refer to the church as the people of God. And like most people, we need to be reminded of the call, the church of the call, the church the call of the church. And sometimes the church needs to renew its faithfulness. There are two rather marked important uh, pastors in the past. Martin Luther, he was the instigator of the 16th century Protestant Reformation. And there was another one who saw a church that had fallen into spiritual despair, spiritual despair. And he wanted to bring it to the attention of others. And he did that, Martin did it by posting his observations on the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral. Now the Church of England, and that's the one John Wesley grew up in, and he was ordained in, that was, uh, he believed that the church, particularly the Methodist, I mean, the, the church itself needed reformation, needed reform, renewal, and that's where the Methodist movement came from and was aimed at. So in today's environment, we have what's called, they call, the nuns and the duns. Now that's nuns such as people who have no religious commitment or they have dropped out of the establishment, and the duns, those who have done or are changing the way they're doing it because they're unhappy with what's going on. And as a matter of fact, the Methodist Church right now has a major reparation that they're trying to understand and to understand really what the Methodist faithfulness should look like. We can probably all agree that we do need to re renew our commitments to the demands of faith. But where do we find the demands of faith? Hmm. I tell you what, why don't you go to 2 Kings 22, 
verses 8 through 20 in your Bible. And follow along with me as I read this. By the way, good luck with the names. I had to research them all, and I'm sure I don't have them all right. Josiah, he was the king. He was the king at that time. Oops, that's the wrong one. 22 verses 8 through 20. Here we go. Hilkiah, and he's the high priest. He said to Shaphan, which is the secretary, he said, I found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Now, the temple is in Jerusalem, of course, and the king, Josiah, he was having the temple restored because he thought, he thought the prior kings had left it into disrepair. So he gave it, Hilkiah gave the book of the law to Shaphan, and he read it. And then Shaphan went to the king, and he reported it to the king. And he said, your officials, they paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord, and ever entrusted it to the workers and the supervisors at the temple. And then Shaphan, the secretary, informed the king, Hilkiah, the priest, he's given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the Lord, the words, the word, yeah. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robe. He was really hurt and disgusted. He was said, I'm sorry, that's not scripture. Let's get back to scripture. Verse 12. He gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest. Achim, son of Shaphan, Achbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary of Isaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all of Judah about what's written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Hilkiah the priest, Achaim, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah, they went to speak with the prophet Huldah. And she was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, the son of Horus, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in a new quarter. She said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring disaster on this place and its people. According to everything written in the book, the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me. And they've burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all, by the idols that the hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I had spoken against this place and his people, that they would become a curse and be laid to waste, and because you tore your robes and you wept in my presence, I also heard you, declares the Lord. And therefore I will gather you to your ancestors and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all of the disaster I'm going to bring in on this place. So they took her answer back to the king. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Josiah was a good king. 
he was considered the best king Judah ever had. And he loved the temple and he loved God and he was trying to restore it, to bring it back to life. And while he was doing that restoration behind some bookcase or something like that, they found the book of the law. And when they read it, he was so sad that he actually tore his clothes and cried. He didn't do it. He's trying to do the right thing. So with that, let's take a look at our video. chapter 22, we come across a most surprising sentence. He did what was right in the Lord's eyes. The he in the sentence is young Josiah, the king of Judah. He follows a long line of bad kings. With nearly every king named in the books of First and Second Kings, we read the words, King so-and-so did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father had done. For generations, the kings of Judah and Israel had led their people away from God. They had worshipped other gods, built temples to them, put their trust in them. In 2 Kings chapter 23, we see just how far from God the people had wandered. In the temple of Yahweh, there were vessels and images made for Baal, Asherah, and other gods. There were priests of other gods whom the kings of Judah had ordained. There were even male prostitutes dedicated to other gods in the temple of the Lord. It was into this religious landscape that Josiah enters as a new, very young king. One of the first things he does as king is to order the temple to be refurbished and cared for. He also orders that all the workers be paid fairly. Already we see a young king with a heart pleasing to God. As the temple is being restored, the high priest Hilkiah finds a book, a book of God's law. Many scholars think it might have been something like the book of Deuteronomy. Whatever it was, it contained the commandments of God, all the laws about how to live in right relationship with God and others, and it had been lost, forgotten, forsaken for a long time. Imagine all those years without keeping the Sabbath, all of those years without celebrating the Passover, all of those generations who forgot God's heart for the poor, the widow, and the orphan. The law of God had fallen behind some plank in the temple, gathering dust for generations, and no one had noticed. When Josiah hears the words of this book, tears his clothes. He is deeply grieved. Imagine for a moment how he must have felt. He was a good king, trying to be faithful. And then he learns how terribly unfaithful he and his ancestors have been, without even knowing it. He sends Hilkiah and others to the prophetess Huldah, asking for a word from the Lord. What they learn is that it's too late. Well, in one sense, it's too late. It's too late to stop the judgment and destruction that is coming. I will indeed bring disaster on this place and on its inhabitants, says the Lord. For the writer of Second Kings, God will allow the people to be conquered and dragged into exile by the Babylonians because of their unfaithfulness. But God will show kindness to Josiah. God will spare Josiah the worst of it, because he has tried to make things right. This turn of events raises some questions for us. Does God really cause that kind of suffering? Or is that just how the writers interpreted historical events? Perhaps even more importantly, is 
it ever too late to turn back to God? Does God ever really give up on us? We know the answer to that one because the story goes on. Though the Babylonian army invades and conquers, God goes with the people into exile. God offers them comfort and hope through the prophets, and God eventually restores them to the land. And ultimately, in the fullness of time, God sends Jesus to reveal to all people the fullness of God's love, grace, forgiveness, and hope. Though we may forget, though we may forsake, though we may suffer, God will never, ever let us go. God's pursuit of us is relentless. God will continue to move us into God's new creation. How do you respond to a God like that? The uh, discovery of that lost scroll mentioned in 2 Kings 22, it was an opportunity for the people of God to renew their commitment to the commands of their faith. Which brings us to today. What are the commands that we have? Well, I can think of 10 of them. And then besides that, Jesus summed it all up with one. He said, love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37. So if you would, you do have a commitment with your faith. We pray you honor it. And we pray that you uh, understand and follow God's word. If you would now go to our closing prayer, which is found on page 35. Lord, we confess that we have not always done your will and kept your law. Forgive us, Lord. Renew our hearts in obedient love so that we might be the body of Christ for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I, I'd like to continue our prayer because I want to pray for our country and our churches and our world as they try to seek the new norm. My prayer is that they seek God's will following the Bible and not into temptations built by man that can be lost in time. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.